In this presentation, we're going to take the information from the payroll register for the first pay period of August and enter that into a journal entry to enter it into our accounting system. So we're going to create a journal entry from this payroll register. This is going to be a really important process and something that may not be concentrated as much on in some payroll classes, but from an accounting standpoint, from debits and credits, really important journal entry to look at. And it's one of the longer and more complex journal entries to look at. Whether we do payroll in-house or whether we do it externally, we still need to do something like this in order to get this information into our system. So it's really useful to know. So to do that, we're going to go to the next tab, this GL tab. And the GL tab is going to have a, a few different data inputs. These are the journal entry areas. Now I've left them all unhidden. We're going to hide some of them just to note that we're going to have one set of, of journal uh, general journals for each uh, new pay period and that'll make it a little bit easier so that we can see things side by side but to do that we're going to have to hide some cells so we'll enter things into the general journal our journal entry from the payroll register things the payroll <laughs> we'll enter the information from the payroll register to the general journal and then we'll post that to the general ledger over here and then the general ledger will generate the trial balance and this will give you just a little worksheet to show you the beginning numbers at the start of this process and what's happening as we go. So to do this first, I'm going to scroll back over here. I'm going to go all the way to the left. And I want to pick up these numbers here. So we're going to say this happened in August and we're going to enter the data at the first day of the next month. So 9-1 here. So for, for I'm going to, to hide all this information because we don't need it right now. I just want to get it out of the way now. We're going to put our cursor right on this F so you can see the drop down, left click, highlight all the way over until uh, AC. So the whole columns are highlighted, not just uh, the segment. And then we left, uh, left click or they're selected, uh, right click, and then hide. We're going to go to this hide area down here. And then you can see it goes to A, B, C, D, and then A, D. So it went all the way across. So that's what we're going to have. So now we can see this first set of uh, journal entries right next to where we're going to post this stuff. All right, so we're going to make a journal entry now. Now the most basic type of payroll journal entry, if we were just to agree to pay someone, would be just like any other expense, it would be very easy. We'd say we're going to credit cash, we're going to reduce cash, and the other side would be a debit to payroll expense, salaries and wages expense in this case. But because we have to withhold all this inf stuff, <laughs> It becomes much more complicated so well, we're just going to pick this information up from the payroll register so we can start with the wages expense just like you would think we're, well first you might think is cash affected the cash is affected cash is going down but i typically in this particular the payroll journal entry uh, think of the cash last because it's kind of like calculating the net check so it's going to be a credit and i'll actually put that in the final component but if you're used to doing cash first, like I normally teach to think of cash first, you could put it up top and note that it's going to be a credit and, and start there. But I'm actually going to reverse that process here to try to calculate this as if it was calculating the net check. So we're going to start off with um, the wages expense. Expenses have a debit balance. We're going to do the same thing to it. We're going to debit the expense. So I'm going to uh, highlight these cells. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to make this a little bit larger so you can see it. So we'll highlight these, we'll copy it, and then we'll scroll back up. Now we have the account numbers here, it's just so you can see the account numbers. Right click and we're gonna paste it one, two, three, just the numbers. And then we gotta pick up the debit amount. So I'm gonna do this with a formula and actually go from tab to tab with a formula. So we're in D5, I'm gonna say equals, and then I'm just gonna go down here to the prior tab and we're gonna pick up the gross pay for the entire payroll now we're not going to record this we could record this person by person we're going to record the gross for all for all payroll time periods here so there's going to be a 48 860 uh, eight, so there we have that and then we're going to have the credits and the credits are going to be what we're going to pull out so in essence if we go back to the earnings record we can see that everything that we're going to pull out over here the deductions from the total column are going to be the credits and they're all going to be pretty much liability accounts because we took this money from the employee and we owe it 
to somebody, typically the government. So if we scroll back over here, we're gonna look for these liabilities. Now, if we go down, not accounts payable, not payroll taxes payable, these are our liability accounts in orange. And note just uh, that this trial balance is in balance because the, the debits are gonna be non-bracketed, the credits will be bracketed, so we don't have two columns here, the credits are bracketed or negative numbers in Excel. And if we highlight the whole thing, the debits minus the credits, if we sum them up, will be zero, meaning that the debits equal the credits. Current income is 500,000 income, not a loss, because it's a credit. Okay, so these are our liabilities, and we, we have obviously just um, limited the accounts so we can focus in on where we want to see this. We want to be able to post things to a trial balance so we can actually see what is happening from an accounting standpoint to the, the general, to the trial balance, to the accounts. So the payroll payable, we're actually not going to use that here. We're going to use that in the adjusting process. I'm going to go ahead and just um, pay it as if we're going to pay it at the same time we process payroll, which may not happen all the time. A lot of books will take it to the payroll payable first, but uh, I'm going to save that till to do the adjusting journal entry. So this is going to be used if we need to do an adjusting journal entry. Uh, so this, I'm probably simplifying it a little bit here. And then we're going to have the uh, FICA taxes payable. So that's something that we withheld, FICA for OASDI, the uh, Medicare HI, something that we withheld. So we need these two. These two are going to be liabilities that we'll pick up. So I'm going to highlight both of them, right click and copy. I'm going to scroll back up, put that in B6, right click and paste one, two, three. Now these are going to be credits because they're going to be increase in a liability account. So we're going to pick these up. Now I'm going to, I'm going to pick this number up from the, the register earnings, uh, but I want to flip the sign. So instead of hitting equals, I'm going to say negative and then go to the register and we're going to pick up the OASDI right there and enter. And that's going to give us the 3031. Then we'll put our cursor in E7. Once again, we'll say negative, go into the register and picking up the HI, the 70899, and enter. And that gives us the 70899 for HI. Now, if we keep going, we have FUTA and SUTA, but those don't come out of the paycheck. Those are, those are payroll for the employer. So we're not gonna do those yet. We will return to them. Once we do the second journal entry, we'll have to do it related to payroll taxes. What well, we, we do have FIT, we had to pull out group insurance, union dues, retirement plan. These are all things that we took out of the employee's check. And they're all liabilities that we owe to somebody. We don't get to keep the money. So we're going to right click and copy. And we're going to put that up top and right click and paste one, two, three. And then we'll just pick up these amounts too. We'll just, the next one is FIT, federal income tax. I'm just going to say negative going back to the register. And we're just going to pick up that FIT. 8,599. The next one is group insurance. We're just going to say negative, go back to the register and pick up the group insurance 5,500 and enter. Then union dues, we're just going to say negative, go back to the register, the 16 and enter. The retirement plan, I'm just going to say negative, go back to the retirement plan, and it's 2,774 and enter. So there we have that. And then uh, the difference then is going to be the net pay. And you can see this just mirrors what we have here. We got the debits minus all the credits will give us our net pay. And that mirrors, if we go back to the register, what we have here, which would be the total wages here minus all of the deductions should give us our net pay. So this is the net pay we're looking to get to. So let's see if that happens. It should be at 26, uh, 266, 11 net pay. That's the cash we're gonna pay. Now again, I'm gonna say that the cash is actually gonna get paid at this time. That might be a bit of a simplification. Also note that uh, we could, it would be best practice really to put this first into another checking account for just for payroll and then take it out of that payroll uh, account. So I'm, I'm going to simplify this a bit so that uh, we have a, less, a few less journal entries to deal with. So a, a couple added steps might be to, you know, take the money out of the checking account, put it into another checking account specifically for payroll, then pay everything out of the payroll account and thereby 
you're able to kind of have a double check by the bank that just deals with payroll when they issue the payroll checks. But uh, again, we're just going to take it out of here to, to limit the this problem a little bit. It's a long problem already. So we're going to say copy the cache. This is the cache that's going to go out. We're going to put that in B12, right click and paste one, two, three. And then we'll subtract this out. So it's the debits minus all the credits or this minus all these. So this is 20,629.89 minus the 48,896. I'm going to do that with our negative sum or plug formula as I call it. Negative sum, double click the sum function, highlight the 48,896 down to the 2,774.20 and that gives us the 28,266.11. If we go back to the register, that should match our amount here for the net pay. So now let's record this out and then we'll do the second component of this, which is going to be to uh, record the employer portion. Now to record this, we might want to freeze the panes. So let's try to do that. I'm going to put my cursor on this side. I'll just put it right here on AD. And when I go to the right, I want to keep this pane here so I can see it. So I'm going to go here. We're going to go to freeze panes, scroll down to freeze panes. Now we should have frozen pane. So we're going to scroll to the right to our um, general journal, general ledger. And we're looking for, I'm going to scroll back over. We're looking for this one first. So this is 502 in the salaries. If we go down here, it's, it's assets, liabilities, and then equity, and then income and expense. We're looking for the salaries, which is our second expense. It's way down here. It's going to be the same order on the GL. So here's our asset accounts in green, liabilities in orange, and then we have the capital and then income and expenses. We're looking for the salaries and wages. So that's right here. And so here we have it. Now the date is going to be 9-1. And we're going to put it into this tab. Now note the debits and credits are in the same column. Credits will be with a negative number. All we have to do is just pick this number up. We don't need any pluses or minuses here. We'll pick up whatever the plus and minus over here. If it's a positive, it'll be a debit. If it's a, if it's a negative, it'll be a credit. So we just need on this side just to say equals. And we're going to point to this D5. That'll bring the zero up by D5, up by the 48,896 uh, to 48,896. Now we'll do the same thing for the FIT. So if I scroll back over here and I just go over just a bit, it'll pop back over there. And the FIT that we need to post, here it is on the journal entry. Uh, this is FICA. This is FICA for OA and here it is. So it's like our third liability. It's going to be in the same order on the GL. So we're looking for that third liability. Here's our assets and then the liabilities. So here's the FICA OASDI. That's 215. That's going to be the same date. Uh, 9 1 is our date. And then the amount is going to be here in AT. We're going to say equals and point to that 3,031.55 and enter. And that'll bring our totals up. We scroll back over. That total note should be here. It shows up here as well. So here's the uh, 3032 it's rounding here so we took the panties off in other words and then the other side was down here here's the wages okay and then now we're going to do the hi so here's the hi 220 if i scroll back over a bit we got the 220 here that's where we're going to post it fourth liability account if i scroll to the right we have assets we have liabilities we're looking for the hi so here it is so it's in uh, AW6, I'm going to say 91, and then in AX6, we will say equals, and then point to that 708.99 in E7 and enter. So there it is on account 220, has that 708.99. If I scroll right back over on this side and go to the right just a little, then there it is 709. We can see we're out of balance here because we haven't completed this yet. So we'll keep going here. We got the FIT, which is the 225. So that's gonna be here. So it's like in the middle of all of our liabilities or slightly towards the end. So if we scroll back over to the GL, we have our assets, our liabilities. We're looking for accounts uh, 225. So here's 224. So 225 is right there. So it's in cell BE six we're going to say the date is nine one and then in bf six we will say equals 
and point to that 8,599.13. Enter. Brings the balance up to 8,599.13. If I put my cursor right on the other side of this frozen pane, go right, then we'll see that information here. Um, the FIT, bringing up the FIT. Okay, so then the next one is going to be the group insurance, the 243. Here's 243 on the trial balance. Same ordering on the GL. Assets, liabilities, and there's uh, 243 over here. 243, we're going to be in cell BE2191 tab. And then in BF21, we're going to say equals. Scroll back up and we're going to point to that uh, 243, that 5,500 and a penny. <laughs> so there it is. And then if we scroll right on the on the right side of our frozen panes and go to the right, or the left side of the frozen panes and then go to the right, there it is, our group insurance. Next one, the union dues, uh, 245. That's going to be the next one down, 245. So if we scroll back over into our general ledger, we're looking for 245. So there's 244, 245 must be up here then. Uh, there's the two, uh, actually it's over here, 245. That's going to be on 9-1 date. And then in app cell BJ6 equals, we're going to go to the union dues. 16, bringing the amount up from 0 by 16 to 16. Then if we put our cursor right on the left side of the frozen pane and scroll right, and then go down, there's our 16. Next, retirement plan, 247. Here's the 247 last liability account. Scrolling to the right, to the last liability account. We're gonna pick up the retirement plan. Here's the 247, scroll down a bit. We're gonna be in BI2191 uh, tab. And then in BJ21 equals, we're gonna to point to that 2774.20 and enter. Then if we scroll back over, I'm gonna put my cursor on the left hand on the left hand side of the frozen panes and go right. And then there's our retirement plan entry. Then we're gonna to go to the checking account. That's gonna be our first account up top. Here's our checking account. First account on the general ledger. So here it is, it's gonna be the date 9-1. And the amount in AL6 will equal and pointing to that 28 266 11 bringing the balance down to uh, 571 733 89 uh, That amount matching here, except we took the pennies off. And then if we scroll back down, we should be back in balance. So we're back into zeros, meaning the debits minus the credits equals zero, meaning the debits equal the credits. We see that net income went down by 48,896 uh, uh, here from 500,000 to 451,104. Now note that we have, uh, this all went to expenses. So uh, the expense of salaries and wages, not payroll tax expenses, because even though we withheld a lot of payroll taxes, these are the employee's payroll tax. So the expense to us is really the wages expense, not payroll tax expense when we record this. And that's really a, a key that people get confused all the time. So note that although we withheld payroll taxes and we owe payroll taxes, it's this side of the journal entry are not our payroll taxes. They're the employee's payroll taxes. And to us, they're just a uh, payroll expense. Now we're going to record our payroll taxes, which is our portion of the, of the social security, our portion of Medicare, our portion, or we all have the whole portion of FUTA and SUTA. So that's going to be our second journal entry. We're going to have to, Put together here and that's going to be i'm going to uh, skip a line and we'll put put that on the next journal entry down here i should have froze it a, a bit over so we can put a date here so we'll have to unfreeze and put a date here but i'm going to skip a line and we're going to start this journal entry on another line okay so that the next transaction is that we're going to have um our expense portion so this is going to be our portion where the I'm, I'm assuming we're the owners so we're taking the 
perspective of where the owners in this problem. So that means that we're going to have to pay our portion of uh, FICA taxes, uh, Social Security and Medicare, and the FUDA taxes. Uh, and we're going to have to record the expense related to it. So I'll start with the expense down here. So payroll tax expense is going to go up. So I'm going to highlight these two. I'm going to right click and copy. That's going to be our debit. So we'll put that on top. So in B14, right click and paste one, two, three. Now I'm not going to put the amount right now because I'm going to calculate the debit after we put in all the credits, which will be all the, all the stuff we owe. So we process payroll and we owe, I'm just going to copy these FICA again. So we have to do this again. We have it up here, but this is our portion now. FICA uh, for OASDI, HI, Social Security and Medicare. FUTA, Federal Unemployment Tax, SUTA, State Unemployment Tax Act. That's why it has an A on it. But then we're going to copy those, right click, and that's going to be our credit. So we're going to put that in B15, right click and paste one, two, three. And so we're going to start here and I'm just going to pull these from our register again, from our worksheet. So I'm going to start with the liabilities. This is what we owe. So I'm going to put it as a credit, not hitting equal, but negative. Going back to our register. And that's going to be all the way to the end in this yellow area. So we're going to pick up the OASDI, which does match. It's the same, but we want to pick it up from, you know, this part of our register. And then the Medicare negative going back over to this item, the HI, enter. And then negative of the FUTA going back over to the register. That's going to be the FUTA 125.38 enter and then the SUTA negative going back over to the register picking up the 86756 and enter so there's that information and then the sum of that will be the expense if we add those up for set I'm gonna do that with the negative sum formula so we'll be in D14 negative SUM double click the sum now, if this is in the way, you can, you can move it out of the way. Just, uh, just move it here. And then I'm going to highlight the whole thing and enter. So then the debits equal the credits here. So that sums up to zero. All right, so now we'll post this. So here's the 520. Way down here, 520, same order on the general ledger. So I'm just going to go to the right. Here's our assets in green, liabilities. And then we have the, uh, and the here the income and expense over here. So here is our wages expense. We're going to be up here in the payroll tax expense. This is in 9-1 again. So we are in BR6. BR6 equals scrolling down just a bit. We're picking up that 4,733.48. And there it is. If we scroll back over to the trial balance, it will have increased the taxes here. So here it is starting at zero up to the 4,733. Now we're going to point post the OASDI. That's going to be up here. Third liability. Scroll into the right to find it. Here's our assets. Here's our liabilities. We're looking for the OASDI. So it's here in 9-1. So we're in AT7 equals and we're going to point to that 3,000 3155. It's going to be the same, looks the same as the one above it, employee portion, employer portion. So it's both coming, going into our liability account, but one's the employee, one's the employer portion. I'm going to scroll back over. Now we need to pick up the HI. Here it is here. Here it is on the trial balance. It's going to be in the same order on the general ledger. Scrolling to the right, looking for HI. So here it is, uh, 220. So in AW7, we're going to say this is 91. In AX7, this equals, and we're going to scroll down just a bit. There's our HI70899 and enter. So again, it's doubled up here. There's the sum 1417. Scrolling back over, we can see that that sum here is here, and that, of course, is, is adding up to the total. Then we have the uh, FUTA, so that's the 223. So if we scroll back over, here's FUTA 223. So it's like the middle account, same order on the general ledger, scroll into FUTA. 
Uh, we're looking for 223. Uh, 220, 223, here it is. So we are in a, uh, BA6, we're going to say 9, 1. And then in BB6, we're going to say equals. Scroll down and point to the FUTA 12538 and enter. So there's FUTA 12538 and I'm going to put my cursor back on the left side and go to the right, just a tab, and then there's FUTA. Then we're going to go to SUTA, the 224. Here's 224 on the trial balance. Scroll into the right. Here's our assets. Here's our liabilities. Gonna scroll back up a bit. We're looking for 224. So I'll scroll down a little bit. Here it is on BA20. So this is going to be 91. In BB20, we're going to say this equals and point to that 86756 uh, in E. Uh, 18 and enter. So there's our 867.56. If we put our cursor to the left of the frozen pane, then go to the right, we should uh, see that information here. So here's Futa, here's Suta, and that puts us back in balance here. And here's our journal entry uh, going from the the salaries uh, going going up, and then the payroll portion of it. So there's our, our two journal entries. Now we're going to post one more journal entry here and this wouldn't we're going to say is happening in the middle of the month, meaning we're going to then pay all this stuff at some point in time. And that's going to be the next transaction we're going to have. So this one's going to be happening on 915, meaning we process the payroll on 91 for the month ended August at the end of August. Uh, and then we're going to have to pay it. So we're going to keep jumping forward in time here. We're going to say we have to pay it basically by the middle of the month. So now all this stuff that we owe, that we that we took from the employees and that we owe as our payroll taxes, we have to pay to somebody. And we're basically just going to be dealing with the payroll taxes here. So we're going to be dealing with these items that we're going to have to pay out. So um, we'll, we'll show that information. We're going to pay it out with, of course, cash. So I'm going to do the cash last because I want to put it on the bottom. So again, if we were to do this journal entry, we're going to say, is cash affected? Yeah. And it's going to be the, um, but we're going to put the cash on the bottom. So we're going to credit cash and we're going to debit all these accounts that we're going to pay when we pay the government, when we pay the government for the federal government for uh, Social Security, Medicare, and FUTA, and then the state government for SUTA. So we're just going to copy all these now. I'm going to highlight all these, right click and copy. We're going to go to cell B20, right click and paste 1, 2, 3. And then we're just going to pay these out. So whatever's in there right now, we're going to pay out. So there's the 6063. It's a debit. It's a credit here. We're going to pay it. So we're going to debit it to make it go down to zero. Then the 1418 uh, here for HI, then the 125, and then the 868. So we're going to pay these out and then we're going to pay that, of course, with cash. So cash is a debit balance. We're going to make it go down, doing the opposite thing to it, a credit. So I'm going to highlight the cash, right click and copy. We're going to scroll back down to uh, B24, right click and paste one, two, three. And you just add these up, adds up to 8,474. I'm going to do that with our negative sum function. It's going to be the negative SUM. Double click the sum, highlight from 6,063 down to 868 and enter. So now the debits equal the credits and there we have it. So we're going to post this out and this will bring these all back down to zero. So we recorded the fact that we owe the liability. Now we're going to pay the liability with cash. So here's our uh, 215. Here it is on the trial balance. We're going to scroll back over and find 215 in the general ledger. So here it is on the GL. This is going to be on 915 now. And we're going to say that this equals in AT8 equals that 6063 and enter. So that brings it back down. Uh, well, we're missing 10 cents. And that's because I can't see the 10 cents on the trial balance. So we should probably add uh, pennies here so we can see that. I'm going to go ahead and do that for 
So I'm going to highlight these, go to the Home tab, and we'll add the sense. That means we're going to have to widen it out just a little bit. So there we go. So there we. So now we can see the pennies. So let's re-enter uh, these numbers and bring out the. Make sure we get the pennies in there because we we do want to be more exact with the payroll. So this is going to be point one. And that'll take care of it. It went down to zero now. And this is going to be uh, 1418.98. This is going to be 125.38. This is going to be 868, 867.56. And then this number should take care of itself because it's just highlighting if we use that plug formula. Okay, then we'll get to the 220. Here's the 220. Now this formula, it already picked it up, so it went back down to zero here because uh, we used the formulas. So now we're gonna go to the 220. Count 220, here's 220 in the trial balance. Same order on the general ledger. Scrolling back over, scrolling back up, scrolling back over. <laughs> here's 220. It's gonna be on 915. We're in AX, so AX8 equals, I'm going to scroll down, back down just a bit and pick up that uh, 14.18.98 and enter. And it's off by a dollar. I'm going to undo that. It should be 14.17.98. So I'm going to double click on this. It should be 14.17.98. Scroll back up. Let's do this one more time. So AX, so this, by the way, of course, these should be there when you, when you work the problem, it'll have the pennies. So you won't have to suffer through this, hopefully. Maybe I'll edit this out. But anyways, equals the 14.17.98, enter. That brings us down to zero. I'm gonna put my cursor on the left side of the, of the uh, frozen panes, go right. And so that's down to zero now. Now we're going to the FUTA. So here's the FUTA uh, 223. Here it is on the trial balance. We're going to scroll to the right looking for 223. Scrolling back up looking for 223. Scrolling to the right <laughs> looking for 223. It's in BA7. Uh, this is going to be 915. And then in BB7, we're going to say equals. Scroll back down and we'll pick up that uh, 125.38 bringing us back to zero. I'm gonna put my cursor right on the left side of the frozen panes and scroll right. So it'll go back over there and there it's back down to zero. One more, we got Suta, or well, two more, Suta. <laughs> and that's gonna be, Suta is here. And so it's gonna be in the same order on the trial balance. We'll scroll to the right looking for Suta. So here it is, 224. So I'm in BA21, so BA21915. We're just going to say in BB21 equals and point to that 86756, bringing us back down to zero. Then we'll put our cursor on the left side of the frozen panes and go right. And so we brought that back down to zero. So all of our payments are down to zero, uh, except for the FIT which we also need to pay. So I'm actually gonna adjust our formula and include FIT here. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna move the cash down. I'm just gonna delete it. Gonna highlight these, delete that. And then the FIT, we, we also have to pay. So I'm gonna highlight the FIT, right click and copy. And we'll put that on the bottom, right click and paste one, two, three. And the amount there is gonna be, uh, 8599.13 then we'll go to cash so scrolling back up cash will be credited right click and copy scroll back down put that in b25 right click and paste one two three then if we highlight this it's going to add up to 17,073.15 cents we're going to do that with the negative sum the plug formula negative sum double click highlight the information or select the information 
and that adds up to 1773.15 if we add the whole thing up sums up to zero okay so now we're at the 225 so 225 is here uh, 225 is here on the trial balance if we go to the right we're looking for it on the general ledger now looking for accounts at 225 we'll scroll back up there it is so in BE7 we're gonna say 915 and in BF7 equals scrolling back down we're gonna pick up that 8,599.13 and enter so that brings FIT back down to zero. If we go to the left of the frozen panes, scroll right and scroll down. Okay, so now we've paid that off. Now we're not gonna go with the group insurance and the union dues, we would have to pay that out uh, somewhere that the retirement contributions, we'll, we won't get into, obviously we gotta have a fund for the retirement contributions, we won't get into how to um, account for the, for the retirement contributions here. We're just gonna note that those are gonna be withheld and obviously are due on behalf of the employees as something that was withheld from uh, the employee paycheck. We're basically gonna be focusing in here on the payroll taxes. Okay, so now we'll just post the cash out. Here's cash. Here's cash up top. First account on the general ledger. So we're in AK7915 uh, and then in AL7 equals scrolling down, picking up that 17,073 and enter. And that brings cash down. Okay, so if we scroll back at, back over then, we should be back in balance. So the green zeros put us back in balance. And uh, note that this journal entry doesn't affect net income. There's no income statement accounts, no income, no expenses or payrolls. All we did was pay off the uh, liabilities we owe these payable accounts, payroll payable accounts, acting just as accounts payable does, meaning they went up when we owed the money, when we processed the payroll and hadn't yet paid it, then we paid it, they went down. When they went up, so did the related expenses of salaries and wages expense and payroll tax expense. And then when we paid it off, nothing happened to the income statement, we just paid off the liability and decreased the cash account. End simulation! End the simulation!